What's going on everybody? We are back with the Stardew Valley video you have been waiting for. We are finally going to see what is behind this impossible to budge boulder and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I'm going to show you every step, everything you need to do. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now first up, I'm just going to show you guys where the in-game perfection tracker is. It is in Mr. Key's Golden Walnut Room. This perfection tracker right here is going to be what you use to keep track of your progress. Once you have 100% here, the cutscene will unlock the day after completion. I'm gonna have this perfection tracker in the corner of the video, just so we can keep an eye on it, and we are gonna go down each one of these items, starting with the produced and forage shipped. All right, so if you go into the pause menu, you're gonna be able to see the collections of the game, and the very first tab of the collections is the items shipped. Now these are all the items you are going to need to ship in the shipping bin in order to complete that first check on the perfection tracker. Now as you can see this does not include any sort of minerals as that's going to be in a later part of this video. But it does include stuff like the radioactive ore, radioactive bar, bone fragments, rabbit's foot, um, all of the foraging items, all the crops in the game, all the artisan items in the game. Everything you can think of is going to be there. One of the harder items right there is the ostrich egg. To get the ostrich egg, you are going to have to complete Professor Snail's Museum on Ginger Island. So that's something to keep note of as you're doing this. And another item you can see here is going to be aged roe and caviar. In order to get those items, you are going to need a fish pond. These are not new items, but just as a heads up, I didn't have a sturgeon pond before this update, and you are definitely going to need one in order to get caviar. So that is what you're going to have to do for the first step on the perfection tracker. Next up is going to be the obelisk on farm, which there are four total, and the golden clock on the farm. Now these are some pretty expensive buildings that you can build at the wizard tower. So first up is the earth obelisk, which costs 500,000 gold, 10 iridium bars, and 10 earth crystals. Next up is going to be the water obelisk, which is 500,000 gold, 5 iridium bars, 10 clams, and 10 coral. Next up is the desert obelisk, which is a million gold, 20 iridium bars, 10 coconuts, and 10 cactus fruit. Last obelisk is also a million gold, 10 iridium bars, 10 dragon teeth, and 10 bananas. And that's the island obelisk. So you need to build all those obelisks on your island, but you also need to purchase the gold clock, which is the most expensive item in the game at 10 million gold. This is the very last thing I had left to do on my perfection tracker. As you can see here is me placing it for the very first time. And all these buildings, it is worth noting, they are insta builds. So you don't have to wait around. They will just be built on your island automatically. And once you have those five items, you are going to have those two checklists done. The next item on the list is the Monster Slayer Hero. Now, the Adventures Guild is located between the mine and the quarry. You unlock it pretty early on in your playthrough. And inside, there is a bulletin board that has some Monster Slayer quests. As you can see, there is slimes, void spirits, bats, skeletons, cave insects, duggies, dust sprites as well as rock crabs, mummies, pepper wrecks, serpents, and magma sprites. Now all those enemies were in the game before the 1.5 update, except for the magma sprites. Those are an enemy and the volcano dungeon. Once you complete those, that is going to be the next thing in the perfection tracker done. Okay, so the rest of the items on the list, minus the golden walnut and the star drops, can be tracked here in the pause menu. So next up is going to be great friends. Now, great friends means you need to max friendship with every single townsfolk in the game. Yes, you need to max friendship with everybody. This one definitely took a while. I'm going to put a link down in the description that has a gifting guide on the Stardew Valley wiki, just so you can easily raise friendship. Next up is farmer level. Now, this is going to be something that you do along the way while playing the game. You just need to max out all of your skills in the game. This is going to be something that you do without even trying, so don't sweat it too much. All you need is just tens in every skill. It doesn't matter what professions you choose or anything like that. You just need to do that. Now, next up, we're going to be talking about the cooking recipes. Now, something with the cooking recipes is the way to acquire recipes is mainly going to be through the Queen of Sauce TV channel. Now, another way to get recipes is going to be from the townsfolk. And how do you get them from the townsfolk? By raising friendship levels. So by raising friendship and going for great friends in the tracker, you are going to be getting the cooking recipes. All these recipes have varying items for ingredients. So you just basically need to look at the ingredients list and cook every single item inside of your house. I'm also going to link a guide to cooking on the Stardew Valley Wiki just because it's 
too long to go over in this video, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Next up is the crafting guide. Now, I recently put out a video of the new items in the game, and you are going to need to craft those items, along with every single other item that is in the game in this menu that I am showing you. To make sure that you craft all the items, you're going to make sure you want to have all the crafting recipes. Again, I'm going to put a link to the Stardew Valley wiki that has all the crafting recipes listed and where you can get them, just so you can easily keep track of them and go from there. Now next up, I'm actually going to talk about finding all the star drops, because this does include finding all the fish in the game. Now, there is a little bit of a visual bug here, so ignore how it says fried egg. That is a visual bug in the game. Uh, I'm not really sure why it happens, but it does happen with the cooking menu. But yes, you need to catch all the fish in the game. Now, an important note, this does not include the new legendary versions of the five legendary fish. You do not need to catch those. That is a Mr. Key quest, and that is all that it is. However, it does include the base legendary fish in the game. Now, when you catch all the fish in the game, you are going to be rewarded with a star drop. So not only are you going to check a perfection tracker thing off the list, but you are going to get one of these star drops in the game. Now, there are six other star drops in the game that you also have to worry about. One of the other easier star drops that you're going to get along the way while doing this is going to be to get your spouse up to 12 out of 12 hearts. That's something that you're going to do along the way while you're doing great friends. So that's not really something that you need to worry about too much. But in doing that, you will be getting another star drop from your spouse. Now, one of the other time consuming star drops in the game is to actually complete the museum. So this means you need to donate every single mineral and artifact in the game. And yes, this does include the prismatic shard. Now, minerals and artifacts you can find naturally, such as jade and rubies, or from the worms in the ground, but you can also get them from Omni Geodes. Now, a couple of these do take a very long time, like prismatic shards are rare, these stupid little strange dolls are really rare, but there's at least a way to get them from secret notes, but you do need to complete the entire museum in order to get one of these star drops in the game. There are four more star drops in the game. One you can buy from the Stardew Valley Fair for 2,000 tokens. One you can get on floor 100 of the mines. One is bought from Krobus. And the last one is from the statue in the secret woods for a sweet gem berry. The final item on the list is to get every single golden walnut in the game. There is a total of 130. And the best thing to do with this, I'm just going to link my video that has some of the hard to find golden walnuts. So then you can go find all the golden walnuts. And once you do that, you are going to be done. The perfection tracker is complete and we are going to be able to move on to moving that boulder. All right, so the morning after you complete the perfection tracker, you're going to wake up and get some messages down there in the bottom. It's going to say the legacy of your farm is eternal and that you're going to hear some rumbling in the distance. Now, that rumbling in the distance is going to be that rock at the train station disappearing. You can see all these parrots are flying away from something. You can tell that they're scared of something. So you're going to want to use your new obelisk. You can go ahead and use the mountain one and teleport to the mountain and head up to the train station. Now, I'm going to go ahead and not commentate over this final scene. But I want to thank everybody for all the support. If you guys want to see more Stardew Valley videos, let me know. And I'll make some more of them. But right now, this is going to be the last Stardew Valley video. Thank you, everybody, for the support. Thank you, all the new subscribers. Let me know what you guys want to see. Um, I'm probably going to be doing a Rogue Legacy video next because the next update is going to be coming out for that. And until next time, I will see you guys later. I hope you guys enjoy this scene.